I'm not holding my phone. Yeah, tell him, tell him I'm starting now. What's your name? Sorry, I didn't hear. So I don't want to say my name because of the camera. That's fine. That's fine. Okay. So before I start, I would like to make a quick prayer that God will guide us of course. into His yes. truth. May Allah give us all Hidayah to know the truth and to establish the truth. Yeah, that's that's important. So how are you doing? You alright bro? Yeah, not bad. Are you? Yeah, alhamdulillah. conversation? Uh, just starting now, yeah. Bro, can you put the light on? Yeah. So, so please don't put the camera on me, but just on Hashim. Yeah, so even if you put the camera on him, we have, we have to blur his face. Because he doesn't want to be on. That's the other video we had 100,000 views on. Really? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Remember, we are famous now. <laughs> remember that video with uh, the, we called the angry Christian preacher gets humbled? How many views are of you? Yeah. Uh, it was a while back, yeah. 100,000 views. So. Alhamdulillah. Yeah, so look, our aim, as you as you said, is to establish the truth. And because you you believe in the Bible, I believe in the Quran, we can, we can place our own, what he says, scriptures on the table. And let's examine them because that's the only way you can establish the truth, isn't it? By examining the scriptures. Isn't that right? So I would like to say that um, I spoke with you about a year ago and it really blessed me because it encouraged me to look into the scriptures more, to study the scripture, scriptures, to dive deep into research the deity of Christ, mm -hmm. the deity of Jesus Christ. Right. Christ. And so I, I looked at like almost like all these almost all the scriptures in the New Testament that show the deity of Jesus Christ. And I looked at them. I read, I looked at, I read like some books, and it was absolutely amazing what I found, and it helped my faith. And so I would like. So to why, why, why are you now research. reluctant to be? Well. Why are you reluctant to be recorded now? Because before, because I don't. If you already, if already hundred thousand people have want, seen you. I don't want to make my digital identity even worse. My digital identity is. Oh, very trust important. me. If you got hundred thousand views, it's already there. <laughs> but I don't want to make it worse because I don't know. Maybe, get worse. maybe I could ask you guys to blur my face in that video on the Dawah channel. But yeah. I don't want to make my. Identity. I don't think it was on my channel, so you'll have to ask it was people. The on this. Yeah, but there are many Dawah channels, as you can see. Lots of independent people. Too. <laughs> yeah. So anyway, look, my friend, was in, uh, you don't want to give a name. That's fine. Can I call you John? Yeah, yeah, call you. Yeah. John. Okay, John. So, what, what is it you wanted to discuss about the crucifixion yeah. of Jesus? So I wanted to discuss why Allah doesn't require a sacrifice for sins. That He just forgives sins by the mercy of Allah. But how is that just? If there's no uh, sacrifice, there's no atonement for sins. Right. Because you how say we... atonement is um, pagan. You say it's pagan. Yeah. But in the book of Genesis. You see, Cain and Abel, they brought sacrifices to God. There must have been a sacrifice. And God accepted Abel's sacrifice. And it was the one with the animals, animal sacrifices. Right. Was it for, was Cain, it, was he it, says to Cain, if you do well, you will be accepted. Was it for the repentance of the sin? The sacrifice they made? Well, it was for... Or was it to please God? It was for to... To, be, to like appease, to be closer to God. I yeah, mean. exactly. Exactly my point. So that is exactly, you know, we, we actually sacrifice. sacrifice we sacrifice in, in the as as an example of what uh, Ab Abraham did, okay? And this is to please God. So our our sacrifice that we do of animals is to please God, just like you said, the son of Adam. Wait a minute. You're saying how is it just? How is it just, for example, to uh, uh, to uh, yeah, to not to have a sacrifice? I'm, I'm, I'm asking you. I'm asking you. How is it just? To to kill an innocent man to well, to atone know, for your sins. Jesus, how is that just? Jesus he willingly took on flesh. Even if he's willingly, and how he is it just? Died for our sins. It was it was God's plan. In Ephesians it says the fullness of the plan of God it, when or revealed. It talks about in Ephesians. And it, I believe it was God's plan from the beginning. Or, you you haven't answered my question. How is it just, is it just? to kill an innocent man? Well, because I'm, it's even if he's willingly, how is it just? It's just because then he can save those who he desires to save. Why does God require he takes, he takes blood and human sacrifice of an innocent man? Why? Why is God not able to forgive you? You know, God, by the way, he doesn't just forgive all the time. God is also able to punish. So when you, no, no, for, for, for anyone, it is up to, look, it is up to God by his wisdom and by his justice and by his love and by his mercy to forgive and also to punish. Okay? But you're saying, he can only forgive by the blood and sacrifice, human sacrifice of an innocent man. Now I'm asking you, I'm asking you, how is that just? I'm, I'm not saying that. Yes, you are saying, saying that. that. Jesus, 
who is God, he came and put on flesh and he lived a sinless life. And he had righteous and he was righteous. How does that answer my question? The cross and he paid the penalty for sin, the price for sin. And then that righteousness he take he takes and he puts it on the believers that they may be holy and they may enter into eternal life with God. Did you hear my question? Or your preaching? The person was, how can God be just? To kill no. Innocent? Yeah. And, we, saying, and which part of your answer answered my question? None. Well, I would say that. that I'm asking you once again. One. How is it just it's to just kill and in? No, no. You're, you're already looking to answer. First, you need to listen to the question carefully. This is not the church, so you're not going to be preaching here. Okay? Here we here here we have a critical analysis of our scriptures. You can ask me questions about the Quran, no problem. I'm asking you a simple question. How is it just to kill an innocent man? Well, the Bible says that Jesus he gave up his, his life willingly. See again, you're not so, answering the question. So is it is he being killed? Is God killing him? My friend, I'm not asking you just? whether he did it willingly or unwillingly. I believe whether what was the purpose of his uh, atonement, sorry, his uh, crucifixion. My question is, why do you think it is just to kill an innocent man for the sins of others? For example, I'll give you a scenario about a court. Yes? Let's say you were the judge. Yes? You have convicted a murderer because he murdered someone and you had the evidence to convict him of such. Since you are a just judge, you will say that he should be punished because he is the one who murdered. Now if someone from the court tells you, you know, John the just judge, why should you punish this murderer why don't you give your son because you are such a loving person such a just person a why don't you give example. no no wait actually you're right it is a terrible example it is it is indeed a terrible example this is my friend this is exactly how terrible your atonement doctrine is Okay, so answer the question then. So Why do you think it is just to kill an innocent man? I believe it was just because, because the son willingly gave up himself his life. See, he's doing it again. And then what does it say? Did I ask him if he did it willingly or not? Did did it, is it relevant? No, no, really. please, please, with all due respect. If you're not going to answer the question, then it's going to be a waste of time. You want a specific answer? No, I want an answer. So but not something other about, than the, qu the your, question. With your analogy, you, um, let's say the son even says, yes, I'll do it. The, the, your actual physical son, in your analogy, says, okay, I understand I'm going to have to die, but I'll do it as long as he gets away with murder. Yes. That's still not just, just because the son says, yeah. And you were absolutely right. That is a ridiculous... And if this happened uh, today, that, that is a, ri a ridiculous scenario. We would if, say that was immoral. Yeah. If there is such a judge, he'll be kicked out of that court. What do you know why? What do you know why? Because he... His, his uh, objective, his, his main career, his main role in that particular um, court is to establish justice. But what does he do? He establishes injustice by killing an innocent man or giving the order to kill his own son who is completely innocent and then letting the one who is convicted murder to go free. See what I mean? And what were you, were you, sorry, were you even listening to any of this conversation? Or are you looking for something else? I was um, listening to a lot of it. No, no, which part? Okay, what did you understand from the example I gave? You're saying that it's not just because he was the guilty one, so he should have died. Exactly. Somebody innocent person would die. So what do you, how do you, now use this example and juxtapose it on the doctrine of crucifixion. So I believe that God was just and that Jesus was just. And what I want to say How? Is how is he just? Just because. Well, I don't, I don't have you can't just say it's just no, because no, it's just. But let me, let me the thank thing you is, no, no, wait a minute, my friend. If you're going to answer the question, then give me another passage. But if you're just going to switch topics, evade questions, no, it, then this is going to become a waste. Yeah. I thought you spent the whole year learning about Christ and Christology it's and really, about really. Christianity. It looks like you can't answer the most basic question I'm asking you. But on the topic that you wanted to discuss, this was his topic, not mine. You're not even mentioned about before Jesus. So in Isaiah 53, in chapter 10, and in chapter 53, verse 10, it says, Yet it was the will of the Lord to crush him. Uh, what we, part of my question are you answering now? And we believe this passage, this passage talks about Jesus Christ. John, what part of my question are you responding to? My question is still the same. Show me how killing an innocent person is just. Well, I... I don't have an answer for you right now. So, I see, I don't know that. See, I don't know that. 
instead of you waffling and giving me things which are irrelevant to the question, but yeah, then it's a waste of time, go, isn't it? I believe that there, I could go more into depth in the Bible. No, no, but what's the point of you? Bible. It's like me asking, if I ask you direction to speak as corner, you tell me my name is John. I ask you for direction, not your name. So let's, let's be fair, let's be sincere. If you don't know, look, you have every right to say I don't know the answer to I that question. I told you, I don't know the Okay, answer. by the way, this was your topic? Yeah, yeah. I okay, so, Allah so what is... So Allah doesn't require because Allah is just. Yes, it's just. Yes. But there's no payment. Like if the person does something wrong and he goes to court, there must be a punishment, a price. But if the person, he can't just be let free for nothing. Yeah, very good point actually. I'll tell you what. Do you know the difference between forgiveness and payment? So there's a difference. Yeah, what's the difference? Forgiveness is... Uh, you look over it, no? Yeah. You, you let go, you forgive. And what is payment? Payment is that there's a price I was paid, it told me. Absolutely. Does your God forgive or does he ask for payment? He forgives because of the moment of Jesus Christ. No, 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 no. no. Hold on. Re listen to this again. Does your God forgive or does he seek payment in blood? He forgives and, he's, and he provided an atonement, he provided a sacrifice in the Lord Jesus Christ. That is a payment. Yeah, yes, you a payment. can't, you're, 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 you're contradicting yourself again. I believe read, that re Jesus, that God provided. Read Hebrews 9.22. The answer is that. Hebrews 9.22. Yes. It says there is no forgiveness without the shedding of blood. So this forgiveness is directly so why is contingent why is on payment. The problem is that you don't have forgiveness in Christianity. You only have payment in blood. We believe that forgiveness comes through the sacrifice and the, the blood. Exactly, that's payment, my friend. So why you, is that a problem? Let, let's you remember you. earlier you asked me that uh, you said the definition of forgiveness is to let go? Yeah. Does, does your God let go or well, does he no, seek payment you know, in blood? I didn't, I didn't say let go. I said overlook. You misquoted me there. Okay, same said, thing. What's the difference? Yeah. What's the difference? Same thing. Let's, no, no, same let's thing. use this analogy. Okay, okay, imagine Imagine yeah, that I, I owed you ten pounds, okay? Yeah. And you're saying you're being you're forgiving me of it because you're giving me a method to pay it. I'm giving you sorry. So let's say you owe me ten pounds, okay? So I need to pay you ten pounds, but I'm not able to. So you like, that, so what you're saying is I'm gonna give you a, a way to pay it, so I'm gonna give you my PayPal. And that you're calling forgiveness. But I've known by the way, that debt, that the debt Bible you owed him. Is that somebody else came and paid it for you? No, no, John, John, that is still a payment. So then, the then you haven't forgiven that's, me of anything. That's still a payment. No, the, Jesus, the person God, let's, let's say God, do you have a, do you have a debt? Was, was it God's will to do that? It says in Isaiah, it was the will of the Lord. Why do you believe him. what that says? Isaiah, 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 why do you believe what that says? says? The suffering servant, Jesus Christ, that's what Isaiah 53 says. Yeah, but that still proves the point I've been well, making all along. It's not just. No, no, I'm saying that it's still injustice, you know why? Because your God planned the torture and death of Jesus Christ, Jesus who is innocent. It was the plan of before the world was began. It was a plan. It doesn't matter. That plan is unjust. It was the plan to show God's glory. That plan is unjust. It was, it was, a, it was a plan. No, it wasn't. Okay, I'll ask you what. Does God die? So I know I heard this about this because I watched it on YouTube. So you say God is immortal. How can Jesus die if he's God? And, and yeah, so go on, reconcile that. Because you, you keep saying God planned the crush, crushing of God in order to forgive the sins which God doesn't let go of without a payment of God by God. Don't you see the illogical, incoherent, confusing, unjust, unjust statement here? In Zechariah says, and they will look on me among whom they have pierced. And that is God speaking there. Isaiah. Yeah, so God can die then. So God was pierced. And where was God pierced? When Jesus was on the cross. This is a God was pierced. Okay, who died on the cross? Jesus Christ. So you're saying God died? I'm saying that Jesus in his humanity. Jesus died for this minute. So who died? Jesus? One person or two persons? So this is where you get you get in the little words and the logical things you put them together. Are you saying not to use logic? That God's ways are higher than our ways. He is an infinite God. We can't always his ways. I believe that Jesus can God be unjust? I don't believe God is it was unjust. Killing an innocent man? You have an answer. Like I said, like I said, I asked you this question. You clearly said that you don't know the answer. I said, so first you need I to go and study that. that. Know, Come back know. before you make another allegation about God. Right now, because that's blasphemous to God to say that he's unjust. And what you're portraying so far is that innocent man is something that God has never told anyone to kill. I believe that it was their plan for the Which has means the plan was unjust? I don't, I, I disagree with you. Well, unless you give me an answer, you got nothing, my friend. Why do you think it is just to kill an innocent man? You already conceded you don't have an answer to that. 
So it doesn't matter how you spin it, it comes back to the same point. Injustice until you tell us the reason. Do you know what is just? That ten pound that I owed you, what would be just is go, look, I'm really annoyed that you you've not paid me back that ten pounds, but I tell you what, you look sorry, you've asked me for forgiveness. Do you want don't worry, don't pay me back. I forgive you. That's justice. And that's Islam. So payment, remember I asked you earlier, payment and forgiveness are two different things. My God is able to forgive without seeking a payment and that is true forgiveness. If you And God is also able to punish. Remember I said, I never said he always just forgives. He's able to do both because by his wisdom and by his justice and by his mercy he can forgive. And by his justice and his wisdom, he's able to punish as well. And I agree that, that God can also punish. But what helps my faith is when I look at the previous times, in the times of Moses, the Israelites, there was, over the beginning of time, there was always a sacrifice. No, no that's not true. Sacrifice. That's not true. Do you know there were people before Moses? Like Abraham? Wait a minute. Like Abraham? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wait a minute. How do you think Abraham, uh, in the generation of Abraham, how did the sins get forgiven? Well, in the Bible says that like, Abraham believed God and was counted to him as righteousness. No, no, how did the people's sins get forgiven? Well, I believe that it was... No, no, not what do you believe, what's in the Bible? What does the Bible say? Because you don't know, you didn't live in Abraham's time. So tell me what the Bible says about the people of Abraham's time. I think in the Torah it says that the... What? Like God, for, that God forgives them, no? Yeah, but how? How can God forgive him without a human sacrifice or animal sacrifice? That's what I'm saying, that God, he looks forward to the time when Jesus is on the cross. How did Abraham's people... Oh, is that just? So, so that's so I go around being evil, sinning and stuff, right? And then someone a thousand years later died on the cross for oh. my sins before so that saying, I didn't have a choice. I think those people who didn't have faith in God and didn't obey them. I'm not saying with, with Jesus. Their, so, their, friends, their sins probably. So, are you saying the people before Jesus, their sins were forgiven because Jesus died? Well, I'm saying that that they. Like Nobody said. For example, said. example David. David. Mm -hmm. so I David came later on. David, okay, let's say <laughs> Now, I asked you about Abraham for a specific reason. Well, and the reason, the reason you're unable to answer this question is because it's not in the Bible. And what, I don't know what you're trying to do with this. What okay, my point is this. These sacrifices came much later after Abraham. But I'm talking about, what about Cain uh, and Abraham? Hold on, hold on. Right? Remember, we already established that. That wasn't for forgiveness of sin. Well, that was to please God. Well, I believe it was uh, because God needs a sacrifice. No, no. Why did, why did, why did Cain, Cain and Abel brought those things because to they were sinners and they needed no no was it for the forgiveness of sins so i don't believe it was for the forgiveness of sins that's right then don't bring it in because i believe it. jesus christ is for the forgiveness of sins yeah but i know you'll come back to jesus christ that sacrifice there was so that god may overlook their sins no 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 god is able to forgive if you read ezekiel 18 it says the father is not accountable for the sin of the son and the son is not accountable for the sin of the father and then it goes on to say that the wicked they call on to god if they remember him Yes, and they call out to him and seek his forgiveness. Yes, seek, seek repentance. Then he's, they are able to live. Live means what? Means forever, eternally. And that means they'll be forgiven. So, so wait, wait, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait, wait a minute. So if God tells you that in the Bible there is forgiveness without the sins, Sin offerings, then, the, then there is other options. That text is not saying that. It is. It was just saying, it was saying that God forgives them when they go seek His face, but it's not saying. Read Ezekiel 18 if you don't believe me. Well, the wickedness of the wicked, the sins will be such that it is never even remembered. It means it will be forgiven. It's not excluding a sacrifice in the text. Why does it say sacrifice in the entire Ezekiel 18? Well, it's not excluding it. It's not there, but it's not excluding it. No, no, but if, it, if God tells you explicitly that vic their wickedness will be wiped away as if the sins were never committed. Then it, and it doesn't say, wait a minute, it does not say that they have to sacrifice anything. Yes. Uh, but you're, part, yeah. but, but now you're, you're assuming that they also sacrifice. I'm Let assuming. me ask you something. What was the punishment for adultery? Adultery? So in the Torah, in the time of the Mosaic Covenant, yeah. there was a great death, right? Sorry, sorry. Why can't you sacrifice an animal? Pardon? Why can't I sacrifice an animal? Right now we are in the, in the New Covenant. I didn't ask you now. I didn't ask you now. Why, why didn't they sacrifice an animal? Why did they not sacrifice an animal? animal? In what time period? No, because you're saying, you're saying all sins can be forgiven just by sacrificing an animal. So I'm not saying, so I'm not saying that at all. Okay, so once again, what are you saying? 
I'm saying because you remember he said that the he blood said, of bulls and animals cannot forgive sins. They cannot. That's what the scripture teaches. They cannot. So the sacrifices were but not necessary. The sacrifices were a in that time period. God overlooked their sins, and He was looking to the future sacrifice of the Lord Jesus Which is Christ. not just. It is just. That's not just. The idea no. that I... Uh, hold on, Ben, Ben, hold on. He said something quite important. No? Are you now backtracking on what you said earlier? What did I say? Wait, wait. Earlier you kept on saying that God need, always had a sacrifice. And now you're saying, saying that wasn't necessary. Okay, you're, chain, you're, you're not focusing on the point. So the point is that there were sacrifices from the beginning of time. Abel and Cain. We're not agree with that. That was not for sacrifice. Yeah, not, that was not for the sin atonement. So well, you keep bringing things in. <laughs> Hold on. There is to worse. please God. No. To please God, yes. I you said it yourself. And pleasing God, and I believe, was also just in certain also, that's not in the also what? sinners. No, God is a holy no, God. God. Every, so look, look, God everyone is a sinner. sinner. Everyone's a sinner, no problem. The point is this Did God demand those sacrifices to atone for the sins? Absolutely not. Say that again. Did God demand those sacrifices for the, to atone their sins? I believe it was for the covering in that time period. Was it to atone for the sins? What are you saying? Sorry. Atone for the sins. Atone for sins. Atonement of sins. So I need to look at the passage what it says in the Torah. It wasn't for the atonement of sin because at that time they did not have this kind of sacrifices for atonement of sin. And even the one which is under the Mosaic law, if you read Leviticus 5, it talks about unintentional sins. Okay? Why is it important? Okay, unintentional sins. Because sin. that means God doesn't need a sacrifice for atonement. I don't understand. It means if you if you commit, like I said, Intentional sins like adultery, murder, what was the penalty? It was death penalty. Yes? It was capital offense. You have a capital punishment like stoning to death. So you cannot just sacrifice an animal and get away with murder or adultery. Are you with me? You're, you're already turning pages. Your focus is somewhere else. So you cannot sacrifice... Did you hear what I said? You said you cannot no, no, hold on. Did you hear what I said? So I... You were not focusing, were you? This is, what, this is what I mean, you know, they are all serious about things which they come to talk to us about. If God has a specific punishment for capital offenses like adultery and murder, which no one can get away with sacrificing an animal, that means God is saying that there is no penalty for this and there is no forgiveness for this. Sorry, there is a penalty for this, which is death penalty and there is no forgiveness for this. Are you talking about the Mosaic covenant? I'm talking about the Mosaic law, yes. So you're saying that they do not offer... What I'm saying is that sacrificing animals cannot get rid of your sins. I agree with Unless and until they were unintentional sins. Unless they were unintentional sins. Unintentional. And where is the Bible? Does the Torah say that? Leviticus. Beginning of Leviticus 5. So, let's take a look. Yeah, let's have a look. Because if sins were forgiven just by sacrificing an animal, then God wouldn't say, okay, if you murder or if you commit adultery, then the punishment for that is death. So can we find it, please? We can verify it. I'm sure you can find it. Leviticus, beginning. I, I, Leviticus 5, the very beginning. So it says, if anyone sins and that he hears a public adjuration to testify and though he is a witness, whether he has seen or come to know the matter yet does not speak, he shall bear his liberty. Or if anyone touches an unclean thing, whether a cross of an unclean wild animal or a cross of unclean livestock or a cross of unclean human things, and it is hidden from him. Let me go further. Are you reading Leviticus 5? This is Leviticus chapter 5. Sorry. Okay. Was it 6 or 5? Um, look at 6 then, maybe 6. The Lord spoke to Moses saying, If anyone sins and commits a breach of faith against the Lord by deceiving his neighbor in a matter of positive security. Because I don't remember that being the Torah that. There is, there is clearly unintentional sins and intentional sins. Well, I don't see a problem with it. You don't see a problem with unintentional? Okay, here it is. Uh, it's in Leviticus 4, actually. Yeah. So it says, uh, Yeah, go on, read Leviticus 4. And the Lord spoke to Moses, saying, Speak to the people of Israel, saying, If anyone sins unintentionally any of the Lord's commandments about these things not to be done, and does not and does any one of them, if it is the appointed anointed priest who sins, thus bringing guilt on the people, that he shall offer for the sin that he has committed. A bull with from the herd without blemish to the Lord for a sin offering. Yeah. So first, the very beginning it says unintentional, and then it goes on to the priest. So there is a specific uh, what do you say sacrifice for the priest. So is not the priest sacrificing the bull for the person or no? What is the text saying? The very beginning said unintentional. You ready? Speak to the people of Israel, saying, if anyone sins unintentionally, any of the Lord's commandments about these things not be done, and does any one of them, 
If it is the anointed priest who sins, thus bringing guilt on the people, then he shall offer for the sin that he has committed a bull. Yes. So it seems like it's saying that the priest unintentionally sins. No, 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 no. It says, if, listen, if people, if, if, you un, if you sin unintentionally, then you must do this. But if you are a priest, then you must do this. So the, the, the subject is unintentional sin, and then the solutions God gives for those two categories of people, the priest and the other but I don't people. see the solution here for the person who sins unintentionally, but going to the, <laughs> but the priest doing something for him, no? There's, different, there's a different law for the priest, and a different but law for... I don't see any text. Can you show it to me in the text? Now? Yeah, yeah. The Where Lord you read at the, at the very beginning. And the Lord spoke. Okay, so read, for example, read for uh, Leviticus 4.13. So we're going now down to 13. And if the whole congregation of Israel sins unintentionally, and the thing is hidden from the eyes of the assembly, and they do any one of the things that, that by the Lord's commandments are not to be done, and they realize their guilt, when the sin okay. which they have committed okay. becomes known, the assembly shall offer a bull from the herd for a okay. sin offering. So there's yeah. another offering for unintentional sins. Exactly, it's for unintentional sins. That's what I'm telling you. And there's another one in 422 as well. I thought you were saying before that there was no offering. No, no. There is. These sin offerings were for unintentional sins. So why That's what I said. Okay, do you know the difference between intentional sins and unintentional sin? I believe so. Good. So when you have an intentional sin like adultery or, uh, for example, like I said, murder, what is the punishment for that? It's stoning to death. So that was prophecy so my, in the Mosaic covenant. Yeah, so what I'm saying is that in the Mosaic law, when you have an intentional sin like this, then there is no sacrifice of animal that will take away your sin. For that, there is a punishment which is the death penalty. But if you have unintentional sin, then this is the this, you sacrifice a bull or something that like problem? that. What's that because you earlier implied that all sins can be wiped away with the sacrifices. I believe that sins can be wiped away by the, by the death of Jesus Christ. And he's told there was no Jesus Christ in the Mosaic time. That's what I'm saying, in the time of Moses. God was looking forward to Jesus Christ. Okay, I, I think they're going in circles. I keep saying to you that Jesus Christ, who came later on after Moses, after Abraham, much later on, the question was, what did the people of Moses, the people in the time of Abraham, what did they do? What did they do? They did not just sacrifice animals. There was other ways where they could got for, have, have been forgiven. For example, if they cannot afford an animal, yes, what what was the, in the Mosaic uh, law, what was the commandment? You can even have a, like flour, you know, from which you make bread. You can use flour on as a, as a burnt offering. So flour doesn't have blood, do you agree? Yeah. Yes, so there are other ways you can get forgiven. But you kept so I, you, you kept mentioning I don't that the only way is through the blood sacrifice so, of Jesus. I'm telling you, there are other ways in the Bible where, where God is able to forgive you without the need for blood. But you because you have been brought up and indoctrinated in a, in a church by the Christians who have taught you this, you have a bias. The Mosaic law was for whom? For the Jewish people, not for the Christians. Do you agree? I think that's, that's correct. Okay, so if the Jews do not interpret it like the way you do, then I think you are misinterpreting the message that came to the Jews. The Jews today, how do you think they get forgiven? There's no temple, they can't make sacrifices. How do you think they get forgiven today? Well, that's, that's their theology, that's their belief. But so, is the, so is the Torah, my friend. That is the point I'm trying to make to you. As you are interpreting their theology with the glasses, with the lenses of Christianity, what which is unfair. Three, sir, what about Isaiah 53? It's absolutely amazing what the Torah... What the, yeah, the only thing says. amazing I've seen here is that how you're able to see a clear injustice and still say it's okay. That is the amazing thing you need to worry about. Because what I'm saying, what I'm saying, to me, God, in Islam, you know, Allah has forbidden it for himself to be unjust. That is one thing that Allah will never ever do. You're saying you can be forgiven by the blood sacrifice. And do you know what the New Testament says? Animals Wait a minute. After, after you, are you a born again Christian? That's what I would like to do. Why, why are you so... I'm not so confident now. Huh? What happened? Fizzled out? Okay, so born again Christians cannot sin. Do you know that? Once you become a born again Christian, you cannot sin. Does it not say in the Greek? The habit is sin. Whatever it is, you cannot sin. 
And if you sin, then you are the child of a devil. John. Right? Yes, first John. So some people. Very good. The text says, it's a habit. So keep continuous. Yeah, don't 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 change. Don't twist the scriptures like the Pharisees. I, 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 what do you mean habit of sin? Is is the habit of sin? No, no, wait. Is the habit of sinning a sin or not? Well, there could be a person who you know, like sins continue, but it's not. This is not important stuff. Right, it is very important, in fact. It, it is, is important. You're it right, is important. extremely important. But if I you cannot like, wait a minute, if you cannot sin once you become a born again Christian, have you ever sinned since you have become a born again Christian? So I'm not. The Bible, I don't believe the text is saying that you can't sin if you're born again Christian. Why don't we read First John? Shall we? Shall we read First John? And let's see if you're right or the Bible is wrong. Says, but I had a teacher once who studied the Greek and he, he explained that some of the texts, it says in the Greek, habit of sinning. And, but the translation is different. This is, this is special pleading because you are unable to reconcile your lifestyle, which is sinful, and you cannot deny that. I believe I'm a, I, I confess I'm a sinner. That's why we need Jesus. Exactly, Christ. my friend. So let's see what it says here. No one who is born of God will continue to sin. It doesn't say habit of sin will continue to sin because God's seed remains in them. They cannot go on sinning because they have been born of God. This is how we know who the children of God are and who the children of the devil are. Anyone who does not do what is right is not God's child, nor is anyone who does not love their brother and sister. So this is telling you very clearly that those who are sinning See how this wait, wait, wait. Those who are sinning are the devil's children, are the children of the devil. Whose child are you? God's child or the devil's child? Because you already co confess that you are a sinner. Even after you become a born again. Which only proves one thing from your own Bible. It's not the Quran, by the way. It's not the Quran. First John. I know this text. I know this text. Yeah, first John 3. You're right. You and the big text. Uh, this, but I don't see problem. First 10 passages. That is what they read. That is about the interpretation. What is author mean? So, why did all the Bibles interpret it like this? Are you saying they're all wrong? Your teacher's right? Say that again. Are you saying all, all the Bibles have misinterpreted the Greek text? Many Christians don't believe that this means a Christian will never sin again when it's born again Christian. No, no, I'm asking I don't even you. Know one Christian hold on, hold on. That. If the Greek says something other than what the English says, what you're implying is that all the, all the Bible texts which have interpreted that Greek text are wrong. And you're right. Your teacher's right. So I'm saying that it's important to look at it. So why did the people, why did the translators misinterpret it, if this is wrong? Why did they deliberately misinterpret? It could be Even today, in the 21st century, they still haven't corrected it. Why? It could be ambiguous. It's nothing ambiguous. It's ambiguous. It could be ambiguous. Okay. This is how we know who the children of God are and who the children of the devil are. Anyone who does not do what is right is not God's child. What is not right is sin. So it could you can you can spin any way you like. I believe that there's ways to You are between a rock and a hard place. First John chapter three, uh, verses four to ten. Okay. So anyway, listen. I got to go to pray now, but you have to do more homework. Specifically, find out from your teachers why is killing an innocent man just. That is what you need to find out. Even if God had planned it, even if Jesus did it willingly. The end result is an innocent man has been punished for your sins, or sin of the murderers, sin of all, all the people. Let me ask you this. If a Christian says that he believes in Jesus, yes, and Jesus has taken away his sins, and he deliberately sins, is he a Christian? Sorry. Like I you. I kind of got stuck in my mind. Like you. You deliberately sin, right? I, I, I believe I can deliberately Yes, so are you a Christian then? If you deliberately sin. If Jesus has forgiven your sins, then what would stop you from sinning further? Because in your mentality, my sins have been forgiven. I got a free pass now. See what I mean? This golden ticket which you claim to have, of a free pass to heaven, just because, because an innocent man died for you, how will it stop you from sinning? How will it stop a murderer from murdering? How will, how will, how will it stop a Christian rapist from raping? What the Bible teaches in Romans, it says that you can either be a slave to sin or you can either be a slave to righteousness. So whom are you slave to if you continue sinning? You hope, but you already confess that you sin. My friend, you already confess that you sin. It doesn't mean that you will never sin. It does, according to you, if you, if you, it says, anyone who does not do what is right is not God's child. It is a devil's child. But did it say always right? It doesn't say always right. Anyone who does not do what is right. Anyone who does not always do what is right will be even make worse. It, it doesn't say always or one time or two times. So, so you can interpret it believe, any way you want. I don't believe that text is saying that you will never sin. Okay, if a Christian who is a murderer 
says, my God has forgiven my sin. Uh, it's okay for me to murder him. Because you're saying it's okay, so, it's okay. He doesn't say always. So if he murders one time, then it's okay. Right? According to your logic. Because of grace is not make us sin more, but supposed to make us like not sin because of grace. John, so, I just gave you a scenario. A Christian murderer murders and he says, My Lord has paid the sin already for me. Well, so he, I will is not he really say is he really did really Well according to your logic he is. The because Bible, you're saying it doesn't say always. The says that there are many people who say Lord, Lord, and, and they go to the Jews and never knew you. So that man who killed the man of not didn't say. Okay, so it, say, it doesn't say about murder in that. It says many people who say, Lord, Lord, we have, uh, we, uh, we, uh, we have prophesied in your name. We have cast out demons in your name. And we have done uh, uh, great things in your name. Something like that, yeah? What does Jesus say? He says, Get away from me, evil doers, I never knew. I was saying that. Get away from me, you evil doers. Who is, by the way, who does, who prophesies in the name of Jesus other than Christians? Who prophesies in the name of Jesus? Yeah. Okay, who does miracles in the name of Jesus other than Christians? Well, many Christians claim to do it, and, and I believe God does do miracles as well today. So it's Christians, right? What are you saying about Christians? I'm saying it is a Christians who do miracles in the name of Jesus. It is Christians who prophesy in his name. It is Christians who cast out demons in his name. So this address, this was Jesus speaking to whom? To the Christians. Now whether you consider those Christians to be true or false, that's your interpretation. But Jesus there is specifically addressing. And he says, only those who do the will of my father. Exactly. What is the will of the Father? To believe in Jesus Christ. We, we Muslims believe in Jesus Christ. We have no problem with that. To believe in Him as the Savior of the world. No, no, no. That's your interpretation. Okay. To me, the Savior of the world at that time... Say. Wait a minute. By the way, the Savior of the world at that time was Jesus. That if you listen to Him, you'll be saved and have eternal life. If you disobey Him, then you will not have eternal life. The Savior of the world in that context, yes, I agree with you. We as Muslims have no issues with that. You as a Christian will be questioned on the Day of Judgment for not doing the will of the Father. What was the will of the Father? To pray only to God, the Father. Yes, Jesus, when he, said, when he was asked, okay, how do we pray? What did Jesus answer? When, how do we pray? Yeah. Are you talking about John 17? I'm talking about the Lost Prayer. Which prayer? Lord's Prayer. The Lord's Prayer. Oh, Lord's Prayer. Yeah. So, how does it go? Um, we're going through a lot of topics. And no, no, no. Answer the question. It's still so relevant. You brought it. You brought three minutes. Maybe. Yeah, no problem. So how, how does the Lost Prayer go? The Lost Prayer. Does it go? I don't know. I've memorized. Oh my God. He doesn't know the Lost Prayer. What kind of a Christian are you, man? I memorized it. I thought that every Christian knew this. The I'm Lost memorized. Prayer. I'm it is like for the Muslim, the Fatiha, you know? I'm like this is the... I'm memorizing other Do you even know the first line? You don't even know the first line? Okay, I'll remind you. Our Father in Heaven. I love your name. Go on. Thy kingdom come. Let's get to that will be done. Point. You know, I, I'm surprised you as a Christian who has studied the Bible doesn't know the basics of Jesus' of Jesus's teachings. Sometimes so when... Okay. So now the reason I asked you for this is because when Jesus was asked a specific question, how do we pray? This was his response. Why does the prayer only start with our Father in Heaven? Why not our Father, Son and Holy Spirit in Heaven? If it is the main prayer of the Christians, then why does he not include the Trinity in there? Why only one person? Maybe it was because it wasn't God's time to, to reveal that. I thought God was always a Trinity according to you. Cousin, so wait, wait, wait. Are you saying all those... To reveal that. Hold on. So you're saying for, for all this time, in the time of uh, Moses, Abraham, Jacob, you know, Ishmael, all this time, Jesus, uh, God was deceiving people. That they are really... the triune God, but he told everyone there's only one person who is a God. Come on. I believe there is. It, it backfires on you, my friend. He is one God. That interpretation backfires on me. I don't believe that God was this. Okay, according to Jesus, who is that one God? Say that again, please. According to Jesus, who is that one true God? The what only true God. In the entire Bible, John 17, verse 3. Yeah, in the entire Bible, according to Jesus, who is the only true God? What happened to the lights? The battery is about to die. The battery is died. 
Okay. Okay. Anyway, maybe we should uh, wrap it up. Yeah. So yeah, that is actually in John 7 and 3. And that's the verse you talked to you about last time. So I did a lot of research on that verse. Yeah. So I, I understand that verse now a lot better. And I believe that Jesus wasn't saying anything wrong there because he was saying the truth that you are the only true God. And Jesus is also God. No, he didn't say Jesus is the only God. He didn't say that. You added that. In that, in that passage, he didn't say that. It doesn't but say there's that. There's no problem in that text because why is, is that no problem? He's affirming that you are the only Who is the you God, here? But he didn't say. No, no, who is the you here? You, he was talking. He was praying to God. Oh, no, the Father. He's praying to God. Don't don't try to get ambiguous with me, okay? I've done this many I, times, I, and you know watched, that. I watched you on YouTube. Videos. Exactly. So you should learn from that. So that I'm not going to just let you I, get away with saying it's so God. And I don't see a problem with that passage. I don't see a problem. Okay. So when Jesus you know says, why? because the author makes it very clear. What? In chapter one, he says, "In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God." There's no Trinity in John one one. That's John one. There's no Trinity in there. But he says that the Word was God. And then he says, and the word became flesh. Is and we there have seen his glory? Glory as the only son from the Father. Is there a Trinity in, in John 1 1? That's the possible. I know you like to run John 1 1, but there's no Trinity in there. But that's the author. The same author wrote John yeah, 17. I'm also he referring to the author. 1 1. So there's why so, would the so, author contradicts himself? You know who's the author of John 1? Who is the real author? What do you believe? It's Philo, the Alexandrian. I disagree. With Philo of Alexandria. Well, go and look it up. Those were his words that John borrowed from him. Okay? So anyway, let's you have to, like I said. If you if you haven't researched it, then you won't know. So maybe I will go research that. Yeah, go and research this. John one. Remember, it's a file of Alexandria. Or how do you spell file of Alexandria? P H I L O. It's, it's on camera. You can you can watch the video. Don't worry. Okay. So John seventeen three still explicitly says. No, it doesn't explicitly. It explicitly says the only true God is the Father. But it doesn't say that Jesus is not God. Okay, so if, if it says only true God, what does the term only mean? So you're gonna say there's only one. I'm the only one here. Only means exclusive. Yeah. What I want to yeah, say. Yeah, the term only means exclusive. That God's way, God's ways are higher than our ways. Does only mean exclusive or not? So you have. Are to you gonna change the English language now? Just to I prove your trinity. That there's a problem there. Okay. Yeah. When God says in John 3.16, do you remember John 3.16? I hope you do. John 3.16? Yeah, yeah, yeah. What does it say? You want to test me on this? Yeah, yeah. Me? So let's see if I pass the test. Go on. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whoever believes. Only what? Him. Sorry, only what? Only begotten son. So how many begotten sons are there? I believe God has only one son. But why, why, wait, wait, why? why? Over here you understood the term only. So now For, wait a minute. Oh, <laughs> has has, has a penny so dropped yet? These are, has a penny no, dropped no, yet? I know you're going with this. Exactly, but do you not see your double standards? In here, in John 3.16, when he says only begotten son, but you you immediately say it can only be Jesus Christ, nobody else. But when Jesus, when the same man says in John 3, uh, John 17, uh, 3, he says the only true God is the Father, you say no, it cannot be only the Father. Jesus can also be can the Father. my answer? Yeah, go on. So my answer is this. What? Jesus says that I and the Father are one. Oh, you went to another passage. Why is that? And that is very important. No, no, why did you go to so another passage? Says, so when Jesus says, you're the only true God, Jesus is, is one with the Father, so he's also God. Okay, here's my rebuttal. Thing, another, another thing I want to say. No, 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 before you go to another thing, here's my counter rebuttal to that. The same chapter, John 17, 22. He also says, let me be one with me as I am one. Absolutely, but absolutely. No, no, wait, wait, wait a minute, wait a minute. So you, no, 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 you are using, this is called special, this is called special pleading. When it comes to Jesus, you immediately say that the only begotten son can only be Jesus. But when Jesus says the only true God is the Father, you have a problem. We look at the whole Bible, we look at the, the whole New Testament, what it says. There are many verses in New Testament that are from the deity of Jesus Christ. And I've done research. Okay, okay, if you've done the research. So we say, what is, so we, we offer a solution for this verse. And we What's say, the solution? The you don't have a solution. Only two God is the Father. Is that, is that Jesus and the Father are one. Yeah, he also says, and I and the disciples are one. I may be like you, like you agreed with one. me. So I and the disciples are one with the Father. I believe that those ones. They don't have to be the same exact type of one definition. Of one. The term only is exclusive. It's, it's Do you not realize this? Oh. The term only, only. It, wait a minute. By the way, it doesn't say one true God. It says only true God. Okay. So when Jesus himself is saying only true God, why do you why do you twist the passage like a Pharisee? Why do you do this? Why? I, see, I don't see it. Okay. I if I said, okay, if I said you're the only person carrying a backpack here, what do you understand by that? I know you're going to say it's exclusivity, only this. Yeah, because you want to say you understand English, yet you twist it. Why? Well, you're you're putting this whole theology on my words. What I want to say. Say, 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 go finish the sentence. No, no, finish the sentence. 
I put the whole theology on the words. Yes, I do. Because what you do is, instead of you being honest and sincere and say that the term only means exclusivity, like he says in John 3.16, the only begotten of God, the only begotten son of God, yes, you over there you see exclusivity. But over here you don't. And you said we have to examine the entire Bible. Yeah, that's fine. I'll tell you what, here's the last point. Yes, before we close, and if you want to make a, a, a counterpoint to that, you're welcome. You show me a single passage in the entire Bible, and by that I mean the Old and the New Testament, where anyone, any prophet, any messenger, any, even Jesus Christ himself, all the disciples, all the apostles have ever worshipped a triune God. Show me a single person, a single passage from the entire Bible, where anybody worships a triune God. And I can show you several where they only worship the Father, including Jesus Christ, when he falls on his face in the Garden of Gethsemane, and he prays to the Father who is his God. As he says in John 20, 17, I go to my Father and your Father, my God and your God. So you show me a single passage, John 20, 17. I've not yet ascended. Yes. So go and tell my brethren that I go to my father and your father. 2017. John 2017. Go to my father and your father, my God and your God. And guys, while he's looking for this, all those watching, do not forget to subscribe to Dawa Wise channel. Jazakallah It's okay, bro. It's okay. Don't worry. If it dies, we're going to finish very soon, inshallah. The batteries are done. Do you want to read it aloud? Do you want to read it aloud? Yeah, read it. No, no, read it, read it. Why are you closing it? You can do research any way you want. Are you going to answer the question I asked you? Show me a single person who worships a triune God from the Bible. Well, I don't believe that I have to show you that because... Because there isn't one. Because Just say it, admit it. There isn't one. Do you know why there isn't one? Shall I tell you why there isn't a single passage in the Bible which says this? Because the Trinity itself was established in the 4th century, 300 years after Jesus. You can do whatever you want. I gave you a clear challenge to show me a single individual who worship a triune God. I showed you where Jesus worships only God the Father. I've shown you several passages, like John 20, 2017, where it comes, confirms that the Father is the father of not only Jesus, but of those the believers as well. I understand and the father is also the God of Jesus and the God of the believers as well. So Jesus has a God. Does the father have a God? So no, he doesn't. I understand how this text can be. Now this might be my final maybe thing I want to say. Go on, go on. So I, 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 I understand how these texts can make it, make it seem like very much like Jesus is not God. But then one must also look at the the texts that are pretty pretty clear that show that Jesus is God. You mean the ones I showed you example, which shows clearly says, that he's not? He says I am. That's not a clear verse. That's and an ambiguous John statement. says in the beginning was the word and we've gone the word was God. And then when Thomas says my Lord and my God. Exclamation at the end of that. These are ambiguous passages. You know what you've done there? Also you have given you have given X number of ambiguous passages and you have completely ignored the explicit passages which I gave you. And then another thing For example, the term I am was also mentioned by Paul. Was also mentioned by, by, a, by, by a beggar in the Bible. Just the term I am doesn't make anyone God. The, the other one that he gave is Thomas. Thomas was exclaiming, no Jew in his right mind would ever worship a man as God. And that is the reason you could only give an exclamation, an ambiguous statement, which is actually an exclamation, not a literal what? sense about... Uh, no, I'm all right, just relax. Yes? So what you have done is, you have discarded the explicit, and you have included the implicit in order to worship a man as God, which is blasphemous, so which wrong. Jesus himself never did. Advocate any time. So Jesus, he was worshipped as God, and he forgave you know, sins. Yeah, yeah, I'm going to. How could he forgive sins if he was a God? He forgave sins. You said that was the last point. Say that again. Oh, you're right. Yes? You're right. Forgiving sins, so, I can forgive your sins. If you have sinned against me, I can forgive you. Similarly, Jesus told his disciples that you will be able to forgive, you have to forgive the sins of each other. Okay? So forgiving sins doesn't mean. Okay, anyway, look. If Jesus himself needs to pray, yes, which God doesn't need to. I don't see a problem. You don't see a problem. Okay, does God have a God? 
<laughs> you have to look into a lot of things, my friend. But anyway, thanks for your time. So, Appreciate it. Okay? Thank you. Professor. Yes. Hopefully, this will have another 100,000 views. Yeah, guys, please blur his face. He doesn't want to be on video. He doesn't want 100,000 people more <laughs> watching him. Assalamu alaikum. Jazakallah khair and assalamu alaikum. Rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.